next Inside Edition. Now at 6, the leaves are turning just in time for the long holiday weekend. A look at some of the fall festivities. Temperatures will be much cooler compared to yesterday, and tonight we'll have enough snow in the mountains. How will things shape up for your Columbus Day? A local firefighter honored almost one year after his death. How firefighters across the nation are coming together to remember the fallen. And a little girl with just one month to live. How the community is coming together for her and her family. No one covers New Hampshire like we do in high definition. Now, WMUR News 9 at 6. Well, the fall colors are showing across the state and now... The temperatures match. Good evening, New Hampshire. Thanks for joining us. I'm Melinda Davenport. It certainly felt like fall across much of the state today, with temperatures dropping about 20 degrees from yesterday. So many of you headed outside for the holiday weekend and are sharing beautiful shots of those changing leaves. We love to see them. So will the cooler weather continue into Columbus Day? Let's turn to meteorologist Bill Guile. It felt so chilly today. The air was crisp. It was lovely. Yeah, what a change from yesterday, too. Huh? We started off yesterday and temperatures were soaring into the mid and upper 70s, but boy, yes indeed, it did turn around big time for today. And here's a look at some of the highs that checked in across the region. Mostly mid-50s was the best we could do. Portsmouth had the highest reading at 58 degrees. And temperatures right now at this hour, because of the cloud cover, have only cooled back a few degrees at the present time. But it is going to be a chilly night tonight and some cool rains are coming through. 30s to the north, low to mid-40s to the south. And some of these showers that you can see coming in on our radar screen, they'll be moving through uh, in the next few hours. They'll continue up until about 2 2, 3 o'clock in the morning and in the mountaintops above 3,000 feet for certain so Mount Washington uh, perhaps around Wildcat uh, going to be seeing some snow on those mountain tops first thing tomorrow morning but it looks like things are going to clear out and turn out to be a nice day for tomorrow and I've got all those details for you in just a little bit. Melinda. All right, Bill, thanks so much. And if you're looking to find the standout leaves, head to WMUR.com's foliage page to find the best colors and upload your pictures to our You Local page. And if you're sharing those pictures on Twitter, remember to use the hashtag NHFoliage. Well, three Manchester residents face charges after police found drug materials hidden in a diaper bag sitting next to a four-month-old. Investigators say the baby's mother and two others were parked at a Massachusetts pharmacy last week when police approached. Police say they found a diaper bag full or diaper rather full of syringes, illegal prescriptions and a spoon with heroin-like residue. Laura Freitas. Nathan Rivard and Alana Doherty now face drug possession charges. Well, the state Supreme Court will soon take up the controversial issue of cell phone use while driving. At hand, whether talking on a cell phone while driving can justify a negligent homicide conviction. You might remember the case of 48-year-old Lynn Dion, who hit a woman in a crosswalk distracted by a cell phone conversation. Well, the impact killed 36-year-old Guinea Bassett and Dion Dion, rather, was convicted of criminal negligence. Now, Dion's lawyers are appealing, saying since cell phone use here is legal, there's no grounds for conviction. Arguments are set to start October 17th. A gentleman's club caught fire in Bedford this morning. Firefighters say the fire started in the bathroom at the Gold Club, spreading to the attic of the building. No one was inside the building at the time of the fire. A sprinkler system is credited for alerting the fire department and putting out the flames, which left little damage. This system was installed roughly three years ago when uh, fire codes for sprinkler systems were required in nightclubs and it was uh, met the code at that time and the effects of that were very obvious this morning here that the fire was contained to the room of origin. The fire caused about $6,000 in damage. Investigators say the cause is likely electrical. Well, and speaking of sprinkler systems, the Manchester Fire Department is stressing their importance. Today kicks off National Fire Safety Prevention Week to illustrate the value of having sprinkler systems. Manchester Fire Department put two demos side by side, set them on fire. The room with sprinklers had fire out in seconds. Manchester's fire chief says it's vital to have a sprinkler system and working smoke detectors. Seen in Manchester, we've seen um, faulty smoke detectors. We've seen smoke detectors that, that have been 
we've moved or, or out of service, so um, we're encouraging people to make sure their smoke detectors work. Firefighters kicked off the week with a parade today. All this week, firefighters are heading to local schools to talk about fire safety. A New Hampshire firefighter who died while on duty was remembered today. 46-year-old Harold Frey of Sandown Fire and Rescue was honored at the National Fallen Firefighters Memorial Service. Frey is one of 85 firefighters remembered at the weekend-long event in Maryland. WMUR's Nick Spinetto joins us live in the studio with all the details, Nick. Yeah, this certainly was an emotional day for hundreds of people, including friends and family of Harold Frey. Frey died last January suffering a heart attack during a training exercise. Today, the Sandown firefighter and paramedic had his name etched in history. Pictured here, Harold Frey accomplished a lot by the time he died at 46. He served in the Gulf War, had three daughters, was a grandfather, worked at the Epping Fire Department, and then Sandown Fire and Rescue. But in January 2011, during a cold water rescue training exercise on the Exeter River, Frey had a heart attack. He was taken to the hospital where he died. A few days later at his funeral, his daughter spoke to News 9. My dad was a great guy, and we're all going to miss him a lot. Almost two years later, Frey is being memorialized along with 84 other firefighters from across the country who died on duty in 2011. The National Fallen Firefighters Foundation organizes the two-day memorial in Emmitsburg, Maryland, every year. The memorial service is about honoring sacrifices. The names of all those who died have been added to the National Fallen Firefighters Memorial, permanently etched into brick. For each of the 85 firefighters named, candles were lit and families remembered. Sandown Fire and Rescue were on hand in Maryland today to pay their respects to Frey. Live in the studio tonight, Nick Spinetto, WMUR News 9. All right, Nick, thank you very much. A local community is reaching out to a family today with a 17-year-old, 17-month-old rather, with just one month to live. Lyra Evans was born with a congenital heart defect, and her past three major surgeries have been unsuccessful. Doctors told her family it's time to celebrate the time she has left. So today, the picture people in the Mall of New Hampshire brought care packages for gift baskets for the family and took a final photo session at their studio. Lyra's family says they are forever grateful. Lyra's time with us here is determined to be short. Um, so we're glad everybody came, though. You know, it's um, supposed to be terminal. You know, they predicted that we have at least two months with her back in August. Um, it's just a question and a matter at this time what we have left. So this being able to happen means a tremendous amount to each one of us. <laughs> Well, and if you still want to donate, call the picture people. That number on your screen, 644-0388. Well, coming up on News 9 at 6, local firefighters go pink for a cause. How they're using the new look to help fight breast cancer. Plus, thousands gather to see giant pumpkins. Just how big some of these gourds grew for this year's Pumpkin Fest. Some chilly showers will move through overnight, but tomorrow is looking like a pretty nice day. I have your forecast coming up. I'm Annie Custer, and I approve. Welcome back. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and in honor of it, Manchester firefighters are going pink. Firefighters will wear pink T-shirts under their uniforms for the rest of this month. Today, firefighters also sold T-shirts to help raise money to help fight the deadly disease. The department will even use a pink fire truck. In commitment 2012, with the presidential election less than a month away, both candidates are getting ready. Today, President Barack Obama headed to California looking to raise more campaign funds. The president will hold fundraisers in San Francisco and Los Angeles before going to a rally in Columbus, Ohio early next week. Meanwhile, Republican nominee Mitt Romney spent a second day in Florida for his campaign. Both candidates are prepping their running mates for the vice presidential debate on Thursday. Thursday. Well, it's a celebration of pumpkins in Milford this weekend. Thousands gathered for the annual Pumpkin Fest, checking out some of the largest pumpkins in the state. One pumpkin tipped the scale at more than 1,100 pounds. There's also music and food and games. Visitors we talk to say it's the perfect way to spend time with family and celebrate the new fall season. And in New Hampshire, we, we're really lucky. We have that 
the, the autumn is one of the nicest times in, in, the, in the state. It's a nice community event. It's great to see all the different age groups that come out, the families. Over the past two days, one vendor estimates 10,000 people gathered at Pumpkin Fest. And my, 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 was it perfect fall weather for the Pumpkin Fest. Yeah, we had a little bit of sun today, a lot of clouds around, cooler temperatures. Now tomorrow, we'll still have cool temperatures, but a lot more sun. Oh, nice. Bill's got the full forecast coming up. And still ahead in sports, the UNH hockey team is gearing up for the 2012 season. Here with the Wildcats think of this year's squad. Two years ago, voters rejected Maggie Hassan's tax record, voting her out of office. As Senate Majority Leader, Hassan pushed a budget with over $300 million in higher taxes and fees, 33 tax and fee increases, a controversial new tax on small businesses, higher taxes on rooms and meals, increased fees for vehicle registration, even a new tax on camping. Maggie Hassan believes in high taxes. New Hampshire doesn't. This advertisement has been paid for by Live Free Pack and has not been authorized by any candidate. Let me tell you how I'll create 12 million jobs when President Obama couldn't. First, my energy independence policy means more than 3 million new jobs, many of them in manufacturing. My tax reform plan to lower rates for the middle class and for small business creates 7 million more. And expanding trade, cracking down on China, and improving job training takes us to over 12 million new jobs. I'm Mitt Romney, and I approve this message. If I wanted something different, I'd buy a new pickup. If I wanted different, I'd try a chocolate swirl. Different can be good, but radically different? Lobbyist Ovid Lamontagne says he'd be radically different than Governor Lynch. My leadership would be, would be radically different in the sense of the policy positions I take. Lamontagne would reject federal funds for schools, forcing drastic education cuts or increased property taxes. He's even for teaching creationism in our schools. That's radically different and radically wrong. This advertisement has been paid for by New Hampshire Freedom Fund and has not been authorized by any candidate. I'm Barack Obama, and I approve this message. I'm not in favor of a $5 trillion tax cut. That's not my plan. The nonpartisan tax policy center concluded that Mitt Romney's tax plan would cost $4.8 trillion over 10 years. Why won't Romney level with us about his tax plan, which gives the wealthy huge new tax breaks? Because according to experts, he'd have to raise taxes on the middle class or increase the deficit to pay for it. If we can't trust him here, how could we ever trust him here? I'm Annie Custer, and I approve this message. This is the largemouth bass, native to New Hampshire. Then there's Congressman Bass. He's found a new habitat, Washington, for nearly 20 years. Bass voted to cut Medicare for you while voting himself taxpayer-funded health care for life. And Bass voted against raising the minimum wage while voting to raise his own pay eight times. Congressman Bass out for himself, not for you. He raised you. He gave you so much. He kept you safe from harm. Now it's your turn to ensure he gets that same tender care. For more information, go to CorvilleCommunities.com. Closed captioning is brought to you by Bellwether Community Credit Union, helping you move into a better home equity line of credit. For more information or to apply, visit bccu.org. Bellwether, making big decisions easy. Now, Stormwatch 9 forecast. Well, good evening, everyone. A bit of a change today from yesterday's temperatures. Things have cooled down, feeling a lot more like fall, and the colors now really coming on strong. We're at peak conditions in the far north. We're getting close through the uh, lakes region, down through the Monadnocks. We're almost there. In fact, perhaps by next weekend, we will be at peak conditions. And a lot of color showing up in southeastern New Hampshire, down into northeastern Massachusetts. So as we uh, go through the day tomorrow, we're going to be seeing a brighter day than today. But temperatures right now, because of the cloud cover that's in place, are on the cool side, but not cooling back as fast as they could. We're in the low 50s for the most part, 55 in Manchester. Up to the north, though, we're looking at 49 up in Whitefield. And there's still more cooler air coming in our direction for the overnight hours, and there's some precipitation heading our way as well. It's going to be a chilly rain overnight tonight. Now, the big wedge of cool air or chilly temperatures that we were seeing yesterday is beginning to shrink up a little bit, now confined to the Great Lakes region because there is a bit of a warming trend back through the Upper Plains states. So this is going to start coming back in our direction as we get towards the midweek stretch, but we have to go through this cooler air mass for the next couple of days. There's a frontal boundary sitting along the coastline, and there's a couple of waves of energy running along it, and some coming in from the west, and it's all headed towards us 
for tonight. So you can already see the showers beginning to push in from eastern New York State. A few sprinkles have been around this evening through the Monadnocks, through the areas around Keene and Jaffrey. We're going to start seeing a few more of them coming in for the next couple of hours. And as we get towards midnight, we'll get some heavier showers moving through. And Futurecast will play this out for us as we go through time tonight. Temperatures chilly to the north. And check it out. There's little shades of pink here. This is around Mount Washington. So there will be some snow in the highest mountain peaks late tonight. Temperatures dropping down into the mid and upper 30s to the north, some low 40s to the south. But everything's pretty much done by about 4 in the morning, and so we'll start getting some clearing. So Monday itself is going to be featuring a good deal of sunshine. But chilly temperatures up north, 48 to 54 for highs, while southern New Hampshire ranges 54 to 59 degrees, some clouds later in the day. Then on Tuesday, onshore winds mean a lot of clouds for us. Some showers are going to scrape by just to the south with a wave of energy going by, and then it gets a little bit milder for Wednesday. So here's the recap in the forecast for you again for overnight tonight. Chilly showers developing across the region as readings fall into the 30s and 40s. And then during the day for Columbus Day, a fair amount of sunshine with readings into the 50s. Tuesday, we're still in the 50s, but a lot of clouds around and a shower perhaps to the south. Wednesday, a few more scattered showers, but we're in the mid 60s, so a little bit milder and then cooling back down again towards next weekend. Balls in the air. It is. All right, thanks, <laughs> Phil. And the Pats are on the field. They are on the field, yeah. They're uh, taking on Peyton Manning and the Broncos. We'll give you an update there. Plus a wild finish to today's NASCAR race at Talladega. We'll show you who pulled out the win. Now, Jason King and News 9 Sports. The colors are a bit different, but the rivalry remains the same. Two of the top quarterbacks to ever play the game, meeting in Foxborough this afternoon. We're talking about Tom Brady and Peyton Manning. Manning now with Denver, going against his old friend for the first time since 2010. Right now, Tom Brady has the upper hand, at least on the scoreboard, 24-7. The Pats leading in the third quarter. It was 14-7 before Tom Brady just uh, quarterback sneaked one over the pile to give the Patriots that 24-7 lead. Wes Welker caught his first touchdown pass of the season in the first half. But those are first half numbers for the two quarterbacks. Pretty similar, but Tom Brady now with a rushing touchdown and those numbers are accumulating as the second half goes on. So we'll have highlights of that tonight at 11 o'clock. Elsewhere, the Dolphins, they were playing in Cincinnati. Pick it up uh, in the second half. And this is Reggie Bush around the left side, 13 yards for the touchdown. And uh, Miami goes on to win it by a final of 17-13. So they're 2-3 and three now overall. Hey, how about the Colts playing without head coach Chuck Pagano uh, for the first time? He is battling leukemia. Fourth quarter, quarter Andrew Luck is going to find Reggie Wayne, who reaches it across the plane. That's a touchdown. Colts take the lead, and uh, the Packers had a chance to tie it with a late field goal, but it sails well left, and the Colts get a huge win, 30-27, to the final over the pack. Over in the NFC, the unbeaten Falcons in Washington. Scary minute uh, moments for the Redskins here. Tied at seven in the third quarter. Robert Griffin III takes a big shot to the head, and uh, he would be forced to leave the game. Did not return. It's a mild concussion. He also needed stitches on his chin. Fourth quarter, though, tied at 17. Michael Turner takes the handoff, takes it in. 13 yards for the score. Falcons 5-0 for the first time in the 46-year history of the franchise. They win 24-17. All right, it's about that time. Hockey season in New England. The UNH men were on the ice last night for their first exhibition game of the season. Trevor Van Riemsdyk scored a pair of goals, while Justin Augusta tallied three assists as UNH skated past St. Francis Xavier 5-2 to two at the Whittemore Center in Durham. The Wildcats open the regular season with a four-game homestand beginning Friday night against St. Cloud State University. New Hampshire hoping to rebound from a disappointing 2011 season. I mean, I think we're all a really close group this year. Uh, everyone knows that they have a role on the team, uh, and we're all going to do our own thing. Um, but at the same time, we're together. Uh, we're really excited. We have bonded for the past month and a half. Uh, we're with each other every day, so uh, we feel like we have a really close-knit group this year. Well, we're a group that's got great leadership, and uh, we're, we're looking forward to starting the season. We want to make a statement that we're back. We had a disappointing season last season. Uh, it's, a, it's a new season for us. we got great leadership. We're excited about it and looking forward to our opening game. All right, baseball now, game two of the American League Division Series, Oakland and Detroit. Top of the eighth, tied at three. Josh Reddick with a solo home run gives the A's the 4-3 lead. 
But the Tigers would tie it in the bottom of the inning. And then in the bottom of the ninth, Don Kelly is going to win it with a sacrifice fly that scores Omar Infante. Tigers win 5-4. They take a 2-0 lead in that series. Game 3, Tuesday in Oakland. Game 1 of the National League Division Series. At last check, they were playing in the eighth inning. The Cardinals leading that one 2 to one game one of uh, the other American League Division Series between the Yankees and the Orioles is being delayed by rain. Casey Kane led the field to the green to the green flag in today's Sprint Cup race at Talladega, but it was the finish everyone will be talking about. Tony Stewart trying to block Michael Wal Waltrip on a green white checker finish, but it was a bad move. Stewart goes airborne. It was the start of a massive 20 car wreck. Through it all, Matt Kenseth escaped for his first career win at Talladega. Jeff Gordon finished second. Kyle Busch was third. Brad Keselowski was seventh today. He holds a 14-point lead over Jimmy Johnson in the standings. That, that slowed everybody down, and I got way out there, which I knew wasn't good. But they all got slowed down, so they were, they were coming three wide, so I just lined up to the middle and saw Kevin, and uh, he stayed lined up on me real good, gave me a push. And then uh, it was still going to be a drag race to finish. I'm not sure how Tony got, uh, got turned around, so I didn't see a lot after that. Congrats. So six races to go to decide that Sprint Cup championship. And again, Patriots winning 24-7 highlights tonight. All right. See if they can do it. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Jason. Okay. And that does it for us. We'll see you right back here at 11.